Good morning, everybody. Today we want to chat with you about one of our favorite stories in the Bible, the story of the Samaritan woman. And you're probably familiar with this story, but we wanted to point out some unique points that may be new to some of you. That's right. So this story takes place in Samaria, and the Jews and the Samaritans were not friends. In fact, the Jewish people would actually add days of travel time to their trips in order to avoid going through the region Mm. so that they could travel around it. But for this particular trip, Scripture tells us that Christ had to go through Samaria. And Scripture also tells us it is the middle of the day when Christ finds himself at the well and he's tired from his journey. Right. And as he looks up, he sees a woman coming to get water alone. Now, I've always found this interesting because the area would have been really hot right. at this time of day. It would, it would have seemed logical that you would either go early in the morning mm-hmm. or in the evening to get your water when it's not so hot. Right. But the well would have been a great place to gather and kind of hang out with your neighbors and you know, talk about your day and stuff. And yet this woman comes alone at the hottest part of the day <laughs> and... You know, we later learn through her discussion with Christ that she's a woman living with a man who is not her husband. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this is not the first time that she's done this. So she stands before Jesus as an outcast among the outcasts. Now, the Jews saw Samaritans as outcasts, and this woman was an outcast among the outcasts. And she finds herself at the well being asked by a Jew, Jesus, to provide him with a cup of water. And through their conversation, we learn more about her. Now, regardless of her living conditions, she does have some spiritual knowledge mm-hmm. of, that is it's seen through their discussion of religious worship. Right. And they discuss living water, and Christ takes a very bold move by proclaiming his deity to her. And this is monumental for a few reasons. This is the first time in scripture where Christ makes the claim verbally and he does it so to a woman and this woman happens to be an outcast among the outcasts. Now, this is a lot to unpack. Right. But wow, what a statement to rejoice over because the disciples return to find Jesus talking to her as they do and as they do she drops her bucket And she has come to gather water, um, but her belief in Jesus was evident. And I imagine that her face must have been radiant in glory from having spent time with Christ, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure it was a happy day for her because she ran to tell the people (laughs) that most likely shunned her, you know, of this man called Jesus because of her insistence, they came And they were saved. It's just a really beautiful story of redemption. It is. And forgiveness and healing. Yes. Um, But something else I can't help but think about, at this time of occurrence, I seriously doubt that this woman thought, people will read about me thousands of years from now. Yeah. I doubt she walked through the rest of her life thinking, I'll be famous in history. And yet here we are reading about her with this testimony that's encased in ink to stand the test of time. Yeah. In Romans 4, verses 24, um, 5 through 7, well, it's chapter 5 through 7, um, walks us through the beautiful redemption that we find in accepting Christ's gift of salvation. And it's through the salvation that we have peace. Amen. Not only are we able to live in this peace, but we're able to endure suffering as that suffering produces perseverance, and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. We no longer have to live in shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts. And the Samaritan woman felt this, right? Like she felt that hope, uh, that hope that the Lord poured out in her because she was able to contain it. Yes. She had to share it with her neighbors. And because of her determination to share her happy joy, many people were saved. And not only that, but her story is recorded in the Bible for generations to come. We get to be recipients of that. Yes. If there's ever a song that I feel embodies the Samaritan woman, it's Oh Happy Day. Y'all know this song. She was shunned by everybody, but a trip to the well for water had her meeting our Lord. Yes. Who honored her by claiming his deity for the first time out loud and giving her that gift of salvation. Yes. It was indeed a happy day. 
Yes. And I can't help but picture her running around town singing God's praises. Yes. You know? So yes. this week we just want to encourage you to remember what a happy day it was when you were saved. Yes. Uh, we'll all face trials this week, but God, mm-hmm. He will walk with you through every valley and rejoice with you on every mountaintop. And you never know, your testimony may be just what somebody needs years from now to gain strength from. That's right. And if you don't know the Lord yet, let me tell you, it will be the happiest day of your entire life. Yes. And we want to encourage you to just um, get in His Word or find someone that can minister to you and just share the good news of the gospel. Just open your heart to it. So um, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning for Grounded. Ellen's going to pray us out, and then we are going to go into a time of worship, and we are going to be singing none other than Oh, Oh, Happy happy day. Day. Yes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that, yes, what a happy day it is and was when you washed our sins away, Lord. Father, we are so grateful for you. I pray now for those who do not know you, Mm. Lord, that they would get to experience the incredible joy of of spending eternity with you and just knowing that you are the living water. Yes. Father, we love you and we worship you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Sense